Um, so next up, oops, doesn't want to stay there. Uh, next up, I'd like to invite uh, Karen Bachman and Roxanne uh, Collins from the Timmins Museum. So good morning, everybody. And uh, you'll notice that this, as you, we go through this process, this is almost like an airing of dirty little secrets from across <laughs> the province. So everybody will feel much better about their own situations once you leave here today. So uh, we're from the Timmins Museum National Exhibition Centre. We're located in Timmins, Ontario, which wasn't quite exactly where you had us in the map. We're closer to the Quebec border than to the other side. But that's okay. Life is good. So this year, we're celebrating our 40th year in the community. Uh, we function as a bilingual community museum, a national exhibition center, an art gallery, and an archives. So after our, we, this is not our original site that we are currently in, we're in a new site. So after our original site uh, sustained some massive damage, we reopened in a new location in downtown Timmins in late 2011. So we're currently operating with three full-time staff, a director, curator, a program supervisor, and a marketing development officer, and four part-time museum attendants. We're open seven days a week, uh, year-round, and we're owned by the municipality and have been for many, many years. So our collections includes about 5,000 artifacts, 216 works of art, 20,000 plus photographs, 311 maps, 2,658 positive transparencies, 231 reels of film, the complete set of the Porcupine Advance newspapers and the hard copy, and a spectacular dugout canoe dating from the uh, mid-15th century. Our display areas that we currently have are the temporary gallery, which is our National Exhibition Centre component, and that's the lovely red, one, red room. And we have a permanent gallery space that is not yet set up as a permanent gallery because you will see we have issues with our collections that need to be dealt with before we do that. However, in 2012, the City of Timmins uh, celebrated its uh, 100th anniversary, so we had to put together a down and dirty exhibition on uh, the history of Timmins, which was very difficult to do when we didn't have access to our collections per se, and had been in the building approximately six months before we could actually get this together. So we did, thank God for the British Museum idea of 100 objects, because we did 100 objects in 100 years for the city of Timmins. So that worked. It wasn't the best, but it worked. Life was good. This is what our exterior of the building looks like now. It's our main entranceway. Um, also, I should say, just just to the, I would say, about here. Uh, we just inherited a historical house called the Hollinger House that used to reside at the Timmins Underground Gold Mine Tour slash Shania Twain Center. So last September, they picked it up and dropped it off in front of us. So we now have a new uh, spectacular uh, heritage building with artifacts that have not been uh, cataloged at all. The register that came over with that was a lovely scroll created by one of the volunteers who put it together that says things like, black stove donated by Mr. Black, and that's it. So that is the extent of, the collect of that. And there's, that, that, we're estimating that collection probably has about 3,000, 4,000 objects within the house, and they're all just in the house. Okay, building floor plan. This is our new building floor plan. Um, I'm going to do this, and I'll scream. Uh, two gallery spaces, and this is our collections area. This is our loading bay, our temporary loading bay, our dirty workshop, our clean workshop, and my office, because we forgot to give me an office, so I work out of there. Which means that when we take our temporary, uh, our exhibitions for the permanent, or the temporary gallery, which is over here, they come through the loading bay, through our storage, through the other gallery, and then to there. Planning was spectacular. Okay, I'm passing this on to Roxanne. She did all this work, so. So I attempted to do this on computer and had many disagreements, so I just went for it by hand. Um, so everything in green is collections, and everything in red is non-collections. So um, it was hard to draw out, so I kind of just added some little red spots here and there, but it's mixed in together. So during the move, a lot of it was kind of mixed, so. Um, yeah, not a whole lot of space to get around, so this one section here is completely blocked off. Um, we can't walk through there, and so we kind of go around and make do. <laughs> um, as well as um, this main one here, we have a lot of non-collection, and um, it's photographs in this second, yeah, yeah in this second uh, room here. 
And then the new acquisitions sit in Karen's office. So <laughs> got a lot of work to do. Um, oh. So now we show you some of our dirty little secrets. These are some of the photographs from our collections area. You'll note everything is still in boxes because everything has not been really unpacked since we did the move. Uh, there are some boxes that we had overzealous summer students who were looking for things who cut holes into them, making it ever more exciting <laughs> just because. We have our textiles stored on wooden shelves, which is what the municipality gave us. Uh, and you'll notice the height of the door so then the shelves are that much higher, and then everything goes up, and you'll notice we have lots of pipes and, and wonderful things like that. And we also have inherited a huge mineral collection, which was, of course, part of the Costain mineral collection. And then, of course, uh, Kid Creek Mines donated the suites of uh, their initial discoveries to us. Uh, which I can't lift and um, have resided on those pallets. But this week I got a wonderful uh, note from one of the geologists in the local mining community who said, I'm coming to help you do all of this. So he's going to take all of our mineral collection and go through and help us out with that. So yay. And he's bringing muscle with him. So <laughs> I'm even happier. Okay, I'm not going to give you our entire how we did our, our self-evaluation, which turned out not, so, not as bad as possible. But the one test on self-evaluation was um, pick three artifacts or t take three numbers and look for them. And look for those artifacts. Uh, so what we've discovered is that it should normally take you five to ten minutes to actually find them. Well, we're not using a watch. We were using a calendar to help us find our collection pieces. So I thought, I'm not going to elaborate on that because <laughs> I don't want to. And our reorg team. Unfortunately, uh, our reorg team right now is Roxanne, who's Superwoman, and me, who's the chick in the glasses. So, but, but I should say, that's our core team. And we are going to be looking at help from the community. And we thought, this is how we're going to involve our community in this project. And we've had a number of people step up who said, we want to be involved. So we were talking about doing a, a training session for them during one day and then having them do specific tasks and to walk us through this. And people are really excited about this because they want to see the collection again. And there's been a lot of really good uh, positive vibes and I thank Reorg for that because that really, you know, when you can talk to your community about this project, wow, everybody gets excited. Okay, I'm passing it back to you. Numbers, lady. So I did all the measurements and the calculations. Um, so we discovered that our floor is about 96% occupied. So with all the things on the ground and kind of scattered everywhere, that's about the, the numbers we came up to. However, about 37 or 38% is occupied by our shelving right now. So we do have room to add if need be. Um, we do have some quite large objects, so that may not change very much, but it's there. Um, so 61% unit, unit fullness, so um, our shelving really needs modifications. There are spaces that are like three feet, um, and there's like one object at the bottom, but it's just a misshapen object, so we have to modify that to make more space. Um, room height, uh, our ceilings are really high, so if need be, we can kind of go above the shelving and, and do something there. Um, so we came up with an overall fullness of 108%. Um, mainly due to non-collection items mixed in there. Uh, so that'll be something we have to look at. Um, so a large percentage, 94% of our collection has been inventoried. Uh, and we can only access about 5% of the objects within three minutes. So something we're definitely going to be working on. <laughs> and that part of the collection is actually the photograph collection, because that we know where it is. So our main collection issues, our artifacts are still packed after the move. Uh, there's general disarray in our storage area. Our shelves are overcrowded in some areas and not well used. Our Hollinger House collection was recently acquired and is not catalogued and we're kind of including it sort of here in the project, sort of the back of our minds because we're going to have to deal with that at some point and those artifacts because they can't stay in there forever. Uh, we have many different types of artifacts and archival material, including this exceptional taxidermy collection that was delivered to us while we were moving into the building at the behest of a councillor who said, this is a great time to do this. So they moved it in, and then we moved our stuff in and went, wow, this is like not good. Um, so with that taxidermy collection needs to be fully assessed. We've been assur assured that there was no arsenic involved and there was no this, there was no that, but we want to really look at that. 
So in terms of some of our building issues, we have non-collections items stored in collections areas because there are nowhere else to find them. And all of those plastic mannequins are actual body shapes of Shania Twain. If you want them, you can have them. <laughs> But not the blue one. I like the blue one. The blue one works. Uh, our, our storage hardware is not being used to its optimum capacity. No kidding. Um, our problem is that lights are left on in our collections area because uh, our office is, my office runs off of the storage area. And as you can see, I need light in there so I don't kill myself. Uh, we have some reoccurring water leaks from our bay doors, but that's easily, you know, corrected. But because of everything is on one level, if it rains too much, it sort of seeps in. And our circulation paths for our traveling exhibitions, as I've said, uh, and general deliveries run through the storage area, which makes things really exciting. Um, furniture and small equipment, we have storage hard our storage hardware needs some modification. We have some really heavy duty shelves because we do collect mining equipment, so therefore we also have those issues with heavy mining equipment, So, but at least we have those shelving, shelving units. Our housekeeping schedule is, um, well, the one at home is better than the one there, for sure, but it's not something that it's uh, very well maintained at this point. Uh, we need to build some mounts for some of our specialized artifacts and some of our special artifacts. And uh, uh, we need to address some of storage needs for specialized collections, particularly our film collection, which is uh, both 16 millimeter, 8 millimeter. Uh, we've also inherited some early videotape from the 70s from the, our local television station, which is very cool, but a pain in the butt, too store. In terms of management issues, um, our, I'm saying inadequate collections mandate. I think it's time that our municipality realized that we cannot collect forever and ever and ever and everything that we did last week is going to come to the museum because if I get another thing from the mayor's office, I'm going <coughs> to scream. So that must be dealt with by our board and that will be dealt with this year and they all seem to be very gung-ho about it. Uh, currently, we have insufficient staff to manage our current collections and its many issues because everything falls under my title, and that is not good in this situation. Um, we're also undergoing budget uh, reviews at this point in time, which I think everybody in the municipal situation is going through at this point, and they're, uh, they're just wondering why we need all of these people at the museum at this point. So it's been very exciting. Um, and then the acquisition of the Hollinger House, which is, this is part of the Hollinger House collection, I should say, in one of the rooms in the Hollinger House. Uh, so that's another thing that we're going to have to deal with. I'm going to let you read this one first, and then I'll do the last one. Okay. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay, so origin priorities. Uh, collections must be unpacked, inventoried, and stored properly using existing storage furniture and equipment with the addition of specialized cabinets. Um, collections areas must be respected. Office, workroom, and storage are for the exclusive use of all things collections. Um, new storage area for all non-collection material will be created and respected. Um, that'll be interesting to see. Uh, this may necessitate finding off-site storage for non-collections material, which include mannequins, chairs, tables, exhibit cases, podiums, and on and on and on. Uh, shelving units must be repurposed. Additional shelves are needed. Liners are needed on shelves as well as desk covers. Um, so those lovely wooden shelves that you saw in the pictures are just bare wood. Um, no items will be stored on the floor with the help of the Municipal Maintenance Department. Carts will be built for oversized items like the pianos, making storage and access to certain areas easier. Those are heavy. The library will be reorganized and some archival material will be relocated to the library. A collection storage location code will be developed and implemented. A housekeeping schedule for the collections area will be developed and implemented. And finally, more urgency. Um, as well, these long-term issues will be addressed in the following two years. We need additional staff to deal with the collections, particularly with the collections management component. Our museum advisory committee will review the collections mandate of the museum, which will happen this year. A plan to deal with the Hollinger House collections will be designed and implemented, and uh, if ever I figure that one out, I'll let you all know. And then lighting in the storage area and relocation of my office is necessary to cut down on the amount of time lights are on in the collections area. So these are some of the things that we hope to address within the next two years. And I'm quite confident we will. And if not, well, there'll be a position open at the Timmins Museum. <laughs> <laughs> So thank you very much. <laughs>